everybody, my name is Kaylee and welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, everybody, so if you did not watch my last YouTube video, I have some very exciting news. I currently have my own Snapchat show out and new episodes come out every week. So it would mean the world if you guys went and checked that out for me because there was a lot that went into the making and process of doing that. So I will be leaving a link down below in the description for that. Also, I know I look a wreck, but today's story time I actually think might be the first two-part story time I've ever done, okay? Like when I tell you guys this is going to be a very long story time, maybe save this for whenever you gotta clean the house, you gotta do your laundry, do your homework, because we are going to be here for a while. During the story time, I'm gonna be doing my skincare routine, my hair, makeup. That's how long this video is going to be. So, it was worth the wait. Okay, everybody, so without further ado, I'm going to bring you guys up close. There we go. Okay, so for those of you who are new here, I'm going to go through my quick, usual little rundown. For most of the video, I will be looking in this direction because my mirror's over here and I would like to see what I'm doing. I do tell these story times at a first person point of view, so if you don't like that, then you can leave. You can pack your things and leave. There's the door. There's the door, bitch! And these story times are sent in by anonymous people. Oh, and by the way, do not mind my nails. I know they are grown out and I have to go and get them done. Okay, so story time about my toxic best friend. So we are going to go back to the beginning beginning, like a few years ago. So buckle up, grab your popcorn, because we are going to be here for a while. Okay, so a little background information. I was 15 and a freshman in high school, and I was about three weeks away from the end of my first semester. And one day I am in class, and this was back whenever flipping the water bottle was popular. So I was flipping a water bottle in the middle of class. And there there is this kid pretending to be a commentator. I have absolutely no idea who he is. I just look over and see him being like, oh, like, can she do it? Oh no, she can't do it. Like that. Well, fast forward, somehow him and I become best friends and we are going to call him Ryan. We started spending a lot of time together, only in school though. We would sit together at lunch all the t every day, actually. We would walk to every class together and our friendship was kind of the friendship that you get jealous of that you see, you know? Our inside jokes were chef's kiss. We were just literally best friends. Well, later on during the year, whenever I had nothing to do, I would go over to my other friend's class and I would just hang out in there. But this is where I met my best friend and we're going to call her Raven. Now, Raven was two years older than me and she sat at the same table as my friend, so we would all conversate. Sometimes. Most of the time she was on the phone with her boyfriend or she would just be on her phone in general or she would be getting ready to leave class early. So at this point, I would kind of consider us acquaintances that talk sometimes, you know, because we still didn't know that much about each other. Well, it turns out that her and I were actually on the same bus, which is so weird because I literally have never seen her on the bus. Never, not once. Most likely because she sat in the back and she got picked up before I did every day. So it makes sense. Anyways, I had been being bullied, I think, by these two girls on the bus. And to be honest, I don't even remember what it was about. I think it was like about a boy or something because that's literally how all of my drama in high school started. And I don't really know how, but Raven found out and she decided to be Captain Save Ho, Ho being me. But I was super thankful for this because I would not have met my best friend if it wasn't for her. So her and I, we are sitting on the bus every day together. And y'all, when I say that this girl was like literally my twin flame, I'm not even joking. Like we were the exact same people. So we both talked about how our stepmothers treated us poorly. And she told me that her mom passed away due to drugs. And my mom was an addict, but she was still alive. So that was something that we could both relate on, not having like an actual mother in the picture. Um, I did find out later though that she lied about her mom being deceased. And she said it was because her mom hadn't been in her life for so long 
long that she was dead to her but long story short her and i were like the exact same person with the exact same life experiences and to me this was the best friend that i could ever have all my best friends before had no idea why i couldn't hang out last minute or why i would get grounded for the smallest things so now her and i would talk every day in school and we were more so the type of friends that would only hang out in school never outside of school now coincidentally ryan and raven had never met each other even though i was walking around with one of them whenever i wasn't walking around with the other so you would have thought that they at least would have met like once well anyways fast forward to the summertime i was going up to my stepdad's a lot i would do one week with him and then i would do one week with my dad which i know you're probably thinking um why are you just staying with only your stepdad but mainly it's because my stepdad and i stayed really close after my mom and him broke up like he was still like a second dad to me so yeah and during the summer i had been talking to this one boy so i kind of sort of had a little thing going on it was like a situationship okay because like we were just having like a lot of fun with each other it was like summer love you know that's what it was you know you meet somebody over the summer and you guys hang out all the time but then whenever it's time for everybody to go back to school you break things off and never really talk to each other ever again it was that that pretty much anyways um ryan would always try to facetime me we would always talk over snapchat or text i think but i don't know why i never answered his facetime calls to be honest i mean we would facetime here and there but it was nothing ever like stay on the phone with your best friend for hours type of facetime you know well fast forward to september there was a fair going on and raven and i finally decided that we wanted to hang out so we both didn't have a ride to the fair and we really did not want our parents to take us, so I decided to ask Ryan to come with us because I also felt like this was a good time to hang out with him because he would always ask to hang out. And the reason why I never hung out with him was because I really wasn't allowed to hang out with boys. Also, things at my home life were kind of shitty, so I just didn't want to deal with the bullshit. So, of course, he says yes, and, and he was super excited. I was too, honestly, because I was about to hang out with my two best friends for the first time outside of school. But I was worried about Ryan and Raven getting along only because of the fact that Raven could be a little, I don't even know how to say it, like, judgy you know yeah i think that's a good word and ryan was not the coolest in school to be honest um yeah but i just said fuck it because if they got along great but if they didn't get along it is what it is so i go over to raven's house and her and i are getting ready she does my makeup because i'm absolutely terrible at makeup at makeup no at doing makeup so her and i decided to take a shot to loosen up a little bit and we did a vodka and pepsi shot which pepsi chaser it was disgusting De definitely do not recommend not at all so ryan finally gets to raven's house and like i said ryan and raven never met and ryan's other friend andrew was there also andrew was super funny he was like this short little chubby cute kid who thought he was hot shit but also in a way where he was like really flirty but subtle with it okay i'm getting off track i need to stay on track because we are going to be here all day where was i all right so andrew and ryan they come they pick us up and i had asked ryan to bring me some alcohol because i was experimenting so he literally made like a mixed drink and brought it in two huge water bottles and i drank a full water bottle and a half of whatever he made because it was fucking delicious surprise ryan raven got along great I mean, they didn't talk too much at first because Raven and I were sitting in the back. We're taking videos, taking pictures, thinking we're so cool. And as we got more comfortable, you know, we're all laughing, having conversations. We're just having like a really good time. Now, I want to put this out here. I have only looked at Ryan as a friend. Friend. Okay? I mean, my best friend, but you get what I'm saying because he never really gave off a hint that he liked me or wanted to be more than friends. I mean, I'm not saying that that would have changed how I felt, but listen, and I think I speak for most people when I say this, okay? If you are the best friend that likes your best friend and they have no idea about it, we will not think of it as more than a friendship if we don't like you back, nor if we know 
if we didn't know that you liked us in the first place. So if there's anybody out there watching this who is a best friend with someone that you like, tell them, okay? Tell them. Because the chances of them knowing that you like them more than a friend are very slim, okay? So yeah, pretty much what I'm saying is you have to put your real feelings out there. You can't just automatically expect your best friend to know that you have feelings for them. Not how it works. Anyways, back to the story. So we get to the fair, right? And I'm not gonna lie, it was a complete fail. It was boring AF. I'm trying not to swear in my YouTube videos anymore. So yeah, it was a complete fail, super boring. So we all decided that we were gonna dip and go somewhere else. So instead we met up with some other friends of Ryan's and Andrew's. Um, We all went and smoked and then Raven and I got dropped back off at her house. I didn't even know how to smoke marijuana at that time, okay, to be honest. Everybody was kind of getting mad at me and frustrated because I was just not inhaling or anything, wasting it. But yeah, so throughout the next two months, we all became like this little friend group. Andrew, Raven, Ryan, and I would always hang out. Well, not always, but whenever we could, we were hanging out with them because, you know, strict parents. Gotta love them. Well, the one night... Raven and I go over to Ryan's house. And at this point, we all are just really good friends, okay? Raven was having some trouble with her man. They were off and on. At this time, they were currently doing okay. You know, they were dating. They weren't broken up yet. Well, we are all hanging out outside and I forget how Ryan and Raven ended up inside alone together, but they did. And I was super bored outside because Andrew's just sleeping. So I decided to go inside and see what was going on. Well, I walk in on Raven and Ryan making out. Like she is sitting on the counter full on making out. So I literally run out and just sit my ass back down. So yeah, but anyways, after this, I am talking to Andrew the one day and he was telling me about how Ryan really liked me. Like apparently he would talk about me a lot and I really didn't believe him because I never got that vibe, you know? I thought I was like more of a sister to him. So after Andrew and one of their other friends told me this, I felt super weird whenever Raven would talk about her and Ryan to me because even though he was talking to her from what I heard from Andrew and our other friend who we are going to call Owen who didn't really come around as much but he was still really good friends with Ryan and Andrew anyways yeah long story short Ryan had a huge crush on me and I had no idea so now even though I knew this it did not change the way that I personally felt about Ryan and I didn't really put any more thought into it after that I mean it was weird for like the next two days but it seemed that the way things were going with him and Raven they were really hitting it off now I guess that one of the issues was that being best friends with your best friend's boyfriend can have its downsides because sometimes I would completely forget that they're in a relationship and I would feel like he should care about my feelings more because we were friends for almost two years now meanwhile they had just started dating and really just met each other like a few months ago but snap back to reality i realized that he would probably feel the same way if i got a boyfriend and yeah i don't want you guys to take that in a way where like i'm saying that he should prioritize me over his girlfriend because that's not at all it it was more of like a i felt like on the back burner because you know him and i used to talk all the time you know walk together in the hallways you know and like yeah him and i just really weren't talking too much anymore you know it was weird at first but I respected boundaries. So the one night we are all supposed to have a sleepover at Ryan's, okay? And I'm standing at Raven's locker with her and we're talking about how we're all supposed to stay over. And I'm like, yeah, I'll probably just stay over the whole weekend with Andrew and Owen. And she was like, you're crazy if you think I'm gonna let you spend the night at my boyfriend's house. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, you're not staying over his house, end of story. Now, this was very confusing to me and it very very much annoyed me not because I wanted to sleep over her boyfriend's house we all were supposed to spend 
the weekend at Ryan's house. Andrew, Owen, Raven, R Ryan obviously it's his house and I. And we had literally talked about this because her and I had to do a lot of convincing for our parents to even let us out of the house. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I truly don't think that argument was necessary because she knew that the only reason why I wanted to stay over there was with all of them. Like she knew we were all supposed to sleep over there that weekend. There was no reason to flip out on me. I think it was more in a way where she had to kind of, I don't even know the word, like mark her territory in a way, I guess, because him and I are best friends and I miss her. I'm her best friend, they're dating, and him and I had, you know, we were back to normal talking as we usually did, so I feel like it was just like a, I want you to remember he's my boyfriend, and whatever I say goes, pretty much type of thing, which I respected that, I had no problem with it, so anyways, I just go, I thought those were the plans, like I thought all of us were staying over there together, well, she slams the locker pretty much in my face, and she walks away. Now, it wasn't that big of a deal that she said I couldn't sleep over Ryan's house with just Ryan because quite frankly, I did not want to spend the night with just Ryan. It was the fact that our whole friend group was going to be spending the night over there and I would be the only one who was like disinvited in a way, which of course made me feel some type of way. Especially whenever Andrew and I had like a little friends with benefits thing going on. And by that, no, I did not mean we did the nasty. I just mean I used him as a rebound and to me, my 16 year old self, making out was a rebound. But at the same time, after that real rebound, him and I had a little flirtation ship going on. So I obviously would like to hang around him. But the main part was I felt discluded from the whole thing. So later Ryan and I are talking in school as we usually do. And I tell him what she said because obviously him and I are talking about plans that we had made for that weekend and how we were so excited that everybody was supposed to hang out together. Well, that turned into, I called him a for not standing up for me to his own girlfriend, which is not at all what happened. I told him about what she said and I said I wasn't going to be able to come because she disinvited me. And like I said, respect boundaries. I'm not just gonna show up if she said that I couldn't come because that would start an even bigger argument, so. Well, after that, she Snapchats me and we have a whole argument over Snapchat. She's like, just because you told Ryan what I said does not change the fact that you're not staying over his house this weekend. So now I knew that my words had been twisted around. So I was like, I wasn't going to WTF. And then Raven says, well, you said, quote, I'll probably just stay at Ryan's this whole weekend. And then I said no, so you went and told him to say something to me. So I'm like, I thought you were saying too, and I'm tired of this bullshit. You need to get over the fact that him and I are friends, and even though you fucked up doesn't mean that he will. Now, if you guys don't recall earlier, before this argument, Raven had been messing around with her on and off boyfriend from before, and yeah. That's pretty much what I meant whenever I said just because you effed up. So then I get a paragraph saying, I don't trust you at all. Oh, why is that? Because you tell me stories of you stealing other people's boyfriends. I said, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Which I would just like to add in here that the one boyfriend that I supposedly stole was a guy that I had dated before whenever I would go and visit my stepdad. And this wasn't the summer that I had talked about before, this was the summer before that. So anyways, I go up to my stepdad's, him and I are hanging out. I had no idea that he had a girlfriend. I didn't follow him on any social medias. I didn't even have him on Snapchat. We were both at one of our mutual friend's birthday parties. And whenever we left, him and I were walking to his house and we made out along the way. Like everything was kind of closed and then we just kind of stopped and like made out in front of this pizza shop. And then we get to his house, he tries doing something with me. I'm not about it. So yeah, and his girlfriend found out because she drove past us. But like I said, I don't really think that's my fault. I had no idea. Like let's stop blaming the girl and let the guy take some responsibility. Okay, okay. Anyways, back to the um, paragraph. She goes, one day you wanna hook up with Andrew and the next day you wanna hook up with Adam. Adam was this guy that I had talked to for like six months straight and then one of my 
friends, my best friends, told him that he was my backup plan in case things didn't work with another guy that I was talking to. And I would just like to put this out there, okay? Adam and I both knew that we liked each other, but he wasn't giving off any hints of wanting to date me. Our chemistry was great together, you know, like there was never like an awkward moment while we were on the phone. But at the same time, if we're talking for six months and you're not making a move, I'm going to be putting in my energy somewhere else as well. Like I'm not committed to just one person. Also, she honestly brought up a lot of things that I had told her in confidence, you know, because she's my best friend. And I'm pretty sure that we all tell our best friends everything. Well, yeah, she pretty much threw half of that shit in my face. Yeah, that was the case here. Back to the paragraph because this argument is still going on. She goes, you say that you don't have any feelings for Andrew, so you don't want to date him, but then you still want to hook up with him for fun. Or the point where you wanted to hook up with Andrew or Owen, whichever one you wanted more that day. I feel like I just keep having to defend myself because literally everything that she said was completely out of context and she knew it was all out of context too. Like she was definitely taking things that I said and twisting my words around and then throwing them back in my face. The reason why she said, oh, you don't know if you want to hook up with Andrew or Owen more is because I wanted a rebound after I talked to a douchebag who used me. And then when he figured out he couldn't get what he wanted, he ditched me and said he had to focus on school. Yeah. So I needed a rebound. It wasn't like every day I was like, oh my God, I think I want to hook up with Andrew. No, I want to hook up with Owen today. No, that was not what it was at all. After Andrew and I hooked up, I never really had thoughts of hooking up with Owen because one, I already got my rebound, so there's that. So she was just being very overdramatic about everything. And I want you guys to remember this for later. Please remember this situation. If you take anything from this first part of the story, take that little bit of information that we just talked about, okay? I will summarize what you need to remember for later, okay? AKA her saying that I wanted to hook up with multiple people and how I don't know if I like this person more or that person more. Pretty much bringing up something that is completely irrelevant, which is me being single. So please keep that in memory. So then she's like, I don't know why you're fighting with me about this. Like if I asked a guy that you were dating to sleep over all weekend, I doubt that you would be cool with it. Like I know you wouldn't do that to me, but I'm not even gonna give you the chance to. So not only am I defending myself, about how, how many guys I talk to, which is absolutely fucking ridiculous. I should not have to do that. I am a 16 year old single girl. Like, what do you want me to do? Get married, have children and die at the age of 16? Girl, last time I checked, it wasn't even your business. How many guys I talked to, okay? So I'm like, I don't care, Raven. I was cool with the fact that you were uncomfortable with it. Okay, I really was. Like I literally said earlier, and yes, I did tell Ryan, how you felt. I do not give a flying you know what that it didn't change anything. Like there was literally nothing to change. I was supposed to sleep over your house and then both of us were supposed to sleep over his house with everyone. Like I thought we established this. I don't know why you are bringing it up again. If it's because I told him, you should have just said, yeah, I said that. Then move on. Like I was not expecting anything to change over me telling your boyfriend what you said. Well, that was like that whole argument, okay? And to my surprise, because she honestly had way too much pride it seemed like to do this, she snapchatted me and said she was angry, blah, blah, blah. And then me saying that I wanted to sleep over Ryan's all weekend was the icing on the cake. She goes, and I shut you down. I wasn't mad about it until I heard that you called him a they're not sticking up for you. I just lost my shit. Um, no sis, no, that's not at all how it went. You were mad. You were mad whenever I said that I was just gonna stay over the whole weekend with all of them. That is why you were mad. It's not because I told your boyfriend. Like, just stop fucking lying. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? So at this point, I'm done with the drama. I respond with, I didn't call him that. I just said to talk to you about it because he also thought that it was gonna be all of us spending the night at his house. So we squashed it. I can't totally remember what happened that weekend, but I think she apologized to me in school. Yeah, she pretty much said that she was sorry and she knows that him and I are friends. Well, fast forward, 
things are going great, but then life changed drastically for the both of us almost in an instant. Things with both of our parents were not going too well, so we both moved in with relatives. She moved a few hours away, and I moved with a relative who lived in my school district. I mean, her and I stayed close though. We would literally talk every day, still. And at this point, Andrew and I were dating, but we were having a lot of issues. Honestly, neither of us took our relationship serious at first, so it was not a surprise that there were a lot of issues. So the group started to fade. Andrew started only hanging out with Owen. This one girl that I introduced to our friend group who we are going to call Abigail. Bad idea and honestly Raven called it. It felt like she was almost like trying to replace Raven and I. She would wanna be the center of attention all the time with every single one of our guy friends. Oh, and after Andrew and I started dating, things definitely got way worse between our friend group. Um, yeah, Ryan, Ryan started being extremely nasty to me, like extremely nasty towards me. When I would talk, he would just start screaming at me in front of every single one of our friends. And the worst part was like, I wouldn't even be saying anything that like would make anybody angry. Like I would crack a joke about something and then all of a sudden I have a man who is literally like a foot taller than me screaming in my face. And I wasn't just being sensitive because everybody else saw it too. Like after we would leave his house, they would be like, yeah, I don't know why he yells at you to be honest. Like, to be honest, we low key feel kind of embarrassed for you when he does that. So after this started happening, um, I definitely felt like I had to start walking on eggshells with him. Um, he would start purposely embarrassing me in front of our friends. And there was like a big situation, kind of, to me it was at least. The one day we are all saying me, Owen, Andrew, and a few other friends were supposed to go to Ryan's after school that day. Well, while I am walking to my boyfriend's car, my boyfriend's, Abigail is walking with all of them. And you know, I run and catch up to them and I'm like, hey, what's up? And then all of a sudden in the middle of the parking lot, Ryan turns around and he says, who invited you? Literally, like exactly like that. Like seriously, I wanna know who. Because last time I checked, we're going to my house. Now, mind you, this is supposed to be my best friend talking to me like I'm literal dirt on the bottom of his shoe. So he keeps going. I don't know what makes you think you can just invite yourself. Oh, and even if you were invited, there's no room for you in the car. Which, um, yeah, that really fucking hurt my feelings. Like, a lot. Like, I was embarrassed because it was in front of everybody, including my boyfriend, the girl that is completely new to the group, and some people that I'm not even really friend friends with, you know? And not to mention, I was literally told that I was supposed to go. Like I was invited. Like he was literally being mean to me over a girl that he had known for two months over me who had been his best friends for two years now. And Ryan's excuse for yelling at me and stuff like that and acting like this towards me was, mm, he said that I was disrespectful, which I don't know in what world anything I did would have been considered um, disrespectful. Like for example, the one night, um, we are all supposed to trip on LSD and my grandma, she is about to drop me off at his house and him and Andrew and Eli are on their way. Eli is like an irrelevant friend. And my grandma said that she was not gonna drop me off at his house later than a certain time. And then he was like, well, you have to wait because we need to get there and you can't just go into my house by yourself. So I, my grandma took me and I told him, I was like, well, I don't know what to do. So she took me, we're there. It's too late for me to even like turn around or anything like that. So I'm literally like standing outside and then, um, yeah, his stepdad invites me in and then I get screamed at, yeah. And I wasn't even trying to be disrespectful. Um, we all had plans to do that that night. So yeah, it was just, um, I feel like a lot of like mental abuse, you know? Because my thing is, is if you said anything back to him, you better be ready to get a lecture from a kid that's your age. 
who literally feels entitled to do whatever the fuck he wants. Oh, because that's another thing. Like, he literally felt like he could do whatever he wanted. Whatever he wanted. Anyways, so after that whole parking lot situation, I blocked Andrew because he did not stick up for me whatsoever. Um, he did not tell Abigail that she had to find a different ride or she didn't he didn't tell Ryan that he was a Douche and he cannot come with us anymore to his own house or we weren't going over there something Like I'm your girlfriend stick up for me and I didn't talk to Ryan for a little bit to be honest I don't really know how we started talking again. I don't really think that there was an apology involved You know Andrew and I obviously figured stuff out because yeah that's how our toxic relationship was. So anyways, we're all hanging out again. So the one night I'm hanging out with Ryan and Raven is still living a few hours away at her relative's house. Obviously she would come back and visit like maybe once every two or three months. And Ryan and I, we were close again, you know, kind of squashed the beef. I honestly think the reason was because I didn't have any real friends around me. So even though he had treated me like shit, he was one of my only friends. Okay, so the one night him and I are hanging out and this is not even like a month after Andrew and I started dating. Well, we ended up kissing. Trust me, I know what you guys are all thinking. Okay, I know. I know that you guys are thinking that, yes, I argued with Raven over the fact that I would never do anything like that to her and how she should trust me around her boyfriend. You guys are also probably thinking she had a valid point whenever she said that I steal people's boyfriends. I know, but I would like to put this out there. That was not in the slightest bit okay for me to do, okay? I fucked up. I was 16. I literally was a dumbass. I was not in a good place, which I'm not using that as an excuse either, but I got kicked out of my parents' house because my dad didn't care enough to stick up for me. My best friend moved away. And the girl that I introduced to my friend group was trying to replace Raven and I. And my boyfriend, well, he just acted like we weren't dating. Like I said, not an excuse, but I will admit that I was just in a place where I only cared about myself. I didn't care about how anybody else felt or how my actions would affect them. So yeah. So there really wasn't a big reason why we had kissed, okay? Um. Pretty much. I don't know if this has ever happened to anybody else, okay? And no, I'm not talking about kissing your best friend's boyfriend. No, I'm talking about you have a best friend that you were not sure where your friendship stands in a way where you think there could be feelings there, but then you think there are no feelings there. And the way that you feel is just the way that you're supposed to feel about a best friend. Like for me, there was no physical attraction whatsoever, for me at least. But the mental connection that we had, like I said, I didn't know if it was in a best friend way or a romantic way. So to sum it up, the reason why I thought we kissed was because we wanted to see if there were feelings there or not. And there were definitely no feelings there. Now, do I feel bad that I went about it that way? Absolutely. And there definitely were no feelings. Now, I feel bad that this was at my best friend's expense. Um, you know, I really probably could have gone about it a different way. But in my head, that was kind of the only way to know that if it was... Yeah, you guys get the point. So after that, it was extremely, extremely awkward. And we had both said that we would never tell Andrew or Raven what happened. And then after that, we kept our distance from each other. Like, the only time him and I would really hang out was whenever we were with friends like there were very few times whenever it was just him and i hanging out and no it was not because we were afraid that it was going to happen again because that just definitely the fir the first the first and only kiss cleared things up drastically the reason why we weren't hanging out with each other was because we both felt guilty as we should and we felt like not hanging out with each other would make it feel like it never even happened in the first place. So fast forward to spring break, I am still in my sophomore year of high school and Andrew Ryan and Ryan's one friend Eli, who like I said, completely irrelevant, all went out of the country together for spring break. So at this point, Raven and I were still best friends. You know, she doesn't know anything about what went on still has no clue that Ryan and I kissed. So fast forward a few days into spring break, Andrew and I really couldn't talk much because they were out of the country and they had shitty ass service. Also, Ryan wouldn't let him call me. Even though Ryan was allowed to be on his phone FaceTiming Raven the whole time, like literally such 
an a-hole like i said he literally just made our relationship a living hell like one time before this Andrew, Ryan, Owen, and I were all hanging out at Ryan's house, and Ryan and Raven are dating, Andrew and I are dating, and he goes, Andrew, look at this girl on Instagram. Isn't she hot as fuck? Blah, 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 blah. Like, things I would do to her, da, 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 this and that. When he's literally staring at me while he says these things to Andrew, and Andrew just kind of laughs and then, like, comes over and hugs me. Yeah. So yeah, anyways, Andrew and I are texting and we were talking about how annoying Raven and Ryan are because Raven didn't even like say anything to Ryan about it. I was like, yeah, can you talk to him about it? Because he literally won't let me fucking call him. And she was being a dick. So of course, Andrew and I are talking shit about them. Like, duh. Well then, Ryan takes Andrew's phone and he goes through our text messages and then he reads them to Raven. And then he broke Andrew's phone so that way he couldn't talk to me for the rest of the trip. Yeah. My thing is, is that like, if you were expecting us not to talk shit whenever you literally were being like, I don't even know, like acting like a freaking five year old. Oh, I can talk to my girlfriend, but you can't talk to yours. It sounds like jealousy. That's really what it sounds like. So, um, yeah, Ryan does that. And then I get a text message from Raven. Raven, I would be more worried about your man trying to make it so that way my boyfriend and I can't talk instead of me talking shit on you to my boyfriend. Cry about it. So yeah, I get the text message from Raven saying, I saw the text messages between you and Andrew. Eli looked up your grandparents' address and I'm gonna tell them everything that you've been doing. Like, okay, sis, you do that, have fun. Um, gonna add in here real quick. One of the things that I really, really, really dislike about Raven like I always have disliked this, is the fact that she would play the role of nobody can get things past her because she'll ruin their life. Like I'm pretty sure my text message was something along the lines of she's so annoying, she lies about everything. Like she had said that she used to steal one of her relatives pain meds but the stories just never added up she would almost brag about it and be like i have a pill problem owen has a drinking problem and ryan and andrew have a smoking problem you can't relate you don't really have anything like why would i want to have any of those things that sounds awful like and she said it all in like a giddy way you know and all of us knew that she would over exaggerate about almost everything but it was getting super annoying so yeah during that conversation i had said something like i don't even know if i said this but i feel like it had to be along these lines if she took 30 pills why didn't she od it just doesn't make any sense not only that remember whenever i told you guys that her mom passed away passed away and i found out that that wasn't actually true well we're in the car one day and she's saying something about her mom being an addict and how she hasn't talked to her in so long blah 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 i know you guys are probably thinking well why does it matter if she told you or not because my thing is the issue that i had was she lied to me about it yes i know i'm loki lying to her but she lied to me about it for no reason and then she tells everybody whenever we're all in the car together like she completely forgot that she told me that her mom was dead. So yeah, during the argument, I had said something about her lying about that. And then she goes, I won't be overdosing, but I will be calling your grandma and telling her everything. Now, after this, she's texting me a bunch of things about how she feels threatened and how I'm harassing her. So because she felt so threatened and harassed, I blocked her. Like, babe, I don't want you to feel that way. So I'm, I'm just gonna block you, okay? Well, then she goes on Snapchat and she texts me, yerp, probably because I didn't respond in the way that she wanted me to. Like I said, she likes to act like, you know, tough big dog, you know, ooh, okay. She wanted me to be scared and say, oh my God, please don't tell my grandparents, please. Like, I'm so scared. Well, I definitely was not. And by tell my grandparents everything, she literally just means how I'm smoking marijuana, drinking, and doing the nasty with my boyfriend. So after that, I Snapchat her and I'm like, if you're gonna do it, oh, stop stalling, do it already. Well, are you ready for this? The funny part is she completely ignores that message, completely ignores it and goes, call me. You're about to receive something in the mail. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, the reason why she told me to call her was so that way it could look like I'm harassing her. Well, little does she know, the police can see that after I blocked her, she Snapchatted me, so she's the dumbass. 
Anyways, also, she's still on the wave of, I'm going to try to make her scared. She's going to cry, blah, 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 blah. So I'll, I reply back with his bet. Like, so you're not going to do shit. Stop playing with me. And honestly, at this point, it's getting embarrassing for her. Like, how are you going to make all those threats and then not go through with any of them? Like, do you guys know those people who are like, oh, like, I'm going to do this to you. And then you're standing right in front of them and they're like, do, do, do. Yeah, no, it's just embarrassing. And honestly, while she's texting me this, I'm out with my friends. So I'm not really worried about what she has to say. She thinks that I'm probably in my bed crying myself to sleep. Nope. Um, I'm actually out with my friends having a good time. And you are not ruining my day. Just annoying me a little bit. So then after I say bet, she's like, yeah, you're right. Actually, it's not gonna come tomorrow. Not today, next week on Thursday. At this point, she's still playing along with her little, you know, tough act. And y'all, this is all because I literally was talking, to, I was venting to my boyfriend. I was venting to him about her and Ryan. So I told her that my grandma knows everything and if something does arrive to the house, um, we'll be pressing charges for harassment, babe. Because at this point, now that I'm looking at it, you're harassing me. So after that, um, the last text that I send her is, to make this clear, don't send anything to my house. Don't have your friends text me. Don't have them send me anything to my house. And if you call my grandparents, we will be going to court. I think I made myself pretty clear. Well, after she goes, I already charges too late and i'm not gonna lie who would look who would this look worse on okay I'm, i want your your honest opinion right she's an 18 year old harassing a 16 year old girl who just asked her to leave her alone yeah so after that you know a few more words exchanged and then we're done she stops texting me well fast forward um i did not get anything in the mail on thursday next week and no nothing about pressing charges against me you know ever came up in my life actually so yeah that's embarrassing honey it really is you know what the funniest part is if i were to like bring that up to her she literally would have been like well i was saving your ass i did you a favor like girl no you did yourself a favor goodbye so fast forward to around may or june of my sophomore year i am walking to my bus when eli again irrelevant comes up to me you know, Ryan's new best friend. He comes up to me and he goes, Raven knows about whatever the fuck the date was this kid said. Like this kid was actually weird. He could have just said, she knows that you two kiss. No, he's like, she knows about like January 12th at 8.30 PM. Bye. So I'm looking at him and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, um, the fact that you and Ryan kissed. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, yep, remember that. Um, I'm not gonna lie, there was a part of me that was like pissed off that he did tell Raven because we did say that we weren't gonna tell Raven or Andrew and he didn't tell me so I could, you know, prepare for my damage control in my relationship, you know? Nope. Instead, he wanted to look like the hero, you know, the one who had a change of heart all of a sudden and decided to come clean because he felt so bad. Okay. Well, I don't really think that it was getting around school. I know that a few people knew, but I denied everything. Obviously, like, I am embarrassed, number one. I'm ashamed of myself, so I am not going to sit there and be like, yeah, I did it, everybody, it was me. It was me, I did it, that is so true. No, like I, like I said, I was embarrassed. Well, Andrew went and stayed with his grandparents for about two and a half weeks. When I found this out, um, he had no idea what was going on. He got sent down there on punishment, like he had his phone taken away and everything. And to be honest, I already knew that whenever he came back, they were gonna tell him. I already knew. So Andrew finally comes back. And a few days later, Raven and Ryan want to stop over because they had just got home from like a month trip out of the country. So Ryan texts Andrew and he's like, we want to say hi to you guys, you know, haven't seen you in a minute, which I know they did not want to say hi to me. So he shouldn't even have put on a front like you shouldn't have. If you got the balls, just say, I want to come and tell you how your girlfriend kissed your best friend. So. Yeah. So I told Andrew that whenever they got there, I was not going outside. And I was trying to act as normal as possible by saying the reason why I didn't want to go out and say hi to them was because I haven't seen or talked to Raven since the whole spring break situation. And I just still didn't want to see her or speak to her. So he begged me 
to go and say hi with him. And I love this boy, so I did go out there. And I would just like to add this in, okay? I want to say a little bit after um, Ryan and I um, kissed, I took a step back and I reevaluated my life a little bit, you know? I realized how fucked up my morals were becoming and where my life was heading. So I made a few promises to myself. One, I would never cheat on Andrew again because I actually realized that I had real feelings for him and I've kept to that. Number two, I would never betray anyone of my best friends like that ever again. No, I don't want an award for that. Thank you very much. I'm just putting it out there. I about to start taking our relationship more seriously. Even though he still did not prioritize our relationship. He actually didn't for the next few years, but that is a story for another day. So I walk out to the driveway and I'm standing next to Andrew and I feel extremely awkward for obvious reasons. Nothing really happened with that encounter, to be honest. It was just her wanting to show me that she wasn't afraid to look at me, like almost a dominance thing, you know? Like, I don't care that you kissed my boyfriend. I'm better than you and I'm gonna make sure that you know it. Because literally the whole entire time that I'm out there, she eyes beaming through my soul. Well, fast forward two weeks, Andrew drops me off at work and before he's like, I'm gonna go hang out with Raven and Ryan. And in my head, I'm like, FML. I was like, oh, okay, what are you guys gonna do? And he's like, I don't know. They said they have something to tell me. Mm-hmm, yep. Um, so I could have told him right then and there, you know, but I was embarrassed. So I did not. So I get to work, Andrew goes and he hangs out with them and obviously they tell him. But not only do they tell him that, they tell him a bunch of other things about me that were not true at all. And I just also want to put this out there, like, I don't want anybody to have sympathy for me, obviously. I mean, like, I'm just saying that, like, even though I lied about that one thing to her, just, like, have an open mind, okay? So yeah, they told him a bunch of other things that I supposedly did. Like they literally took some shit and ran with it. One night I was tripping on LSD with two of my friends, which were boys. And it was not weird to me in the slightest. And I'm not even saying this to be that girl, but I was honestly like one of the guys, you know, because I did not like any of them like that. And we would all just hang out and get effed up together, you know? So yeah, like I said though, we were tripping on LSD the one night and our one friend had fallen asleep on the other side of the couch. And my other friend and I, we are sitting on the other side of the couch and we are playing on my phone while we are still tripping and we're looking up trippy pictures on Google when all of the sudden he tries to stick his hand down my pants. Mm-hmm, yep. There we go. And I kind of just grabbed his wrist and like, you know, threw it back to him. And you know, I'm still like tripping, okay? So I look at him and I just shake my head and I'm like, I don't know, it gets pretty awkward after that, I'm sure. So I don't really remember what happened after that, but all I know is that I went to sleep, he went to sleep, and it was very awkward the next morning. And I ended up telling Raven about this, okay, before her and I had gone into the fight. And she was like, I don't believe you. I know him, he would never do that. And I'm like, no, actually, he really did do that. And she was like, don't ever say that about my brother again. Like, hold up, hold on a minute, hold on. I said, hold up. Wait a minute, something ain't right. Back it up, back it up, back it up, okay? I'm gonna make one thing clear. Her brother that she's talking about, um, yeah, this was a guy who was supposedly talking or dating her best friend at the time whenever I first met her, and she was fooling around with him behind her best friend's back. So, your brother my ass. So I think really the only two reasons why she didn't believe it was because one, she still had feelings for him. Two, she didn't want to believe that he would even try doing something with me, which I'm not gonna lie. Um, she said she didn't believe me and she also didn't believe his ex-girlfriend who he essayed while she was black out drunk. So yeah. Um, anyways, back to Raven and Ryan trying to get Andrew to hate me. They said that I did hook up with, um, that one kid, and then I hooked up with another kid, supposedly, at a party, which again was not true. Um, the word that was going around was I let him take nude pictures of me, which I have no recollection of at all because I was literally blackout drunk, and I really just, last thing I really remember is that my friend couldn't take me home, so... 
yeah also i have never seen these also i've never seen these nude pics of myself anywhere and that that stuff usually gets around so okay raven so andrew comes to my work after he talked to them and he told me to come outside we need to talk so i take my break and i go out to his car and as soon as i get in he's like so and i'm like so and i already knew i already knew he was like raven and ryan told me everything that you've done okay so you know um i'm like no i didn't do any of that stuff you know i tell him about the first two situations but i do lie about kissing ryan because i'm embarrassed i'm ashamed and yeah there's nothing else to say about it like i was embarrassed that i kissed his best friend which was my best friend's boyfriend so yeah well then i realized that he is on the phone with them while we're having this conversation okay and then i like see andrew kind of looking around kind of out the window so I turn around, they are parked right next to our car. Ryan and Raven. Yeah. Um, I tell him to hang up the fucking phone, and he does. And I'm pretty much screaming at him. To be honest, I weren't paying attention to what Dumb and Dumber were doing in the other car. Um, I don't know what you guys were trying to accomplish by that, but yeah. If anything, you guys wasted your gas money because he hung up the phone and you guys had no entertainment. Goodbye. Like the reason, now I know that I really have no reason to like be as upset as I am. But the reason why I am very upset is because yes, I know that I effed up. Okay, I know that. 100% that is clear to me but he kind of just decided to put me on blast so you know we drive back to his place and I am extremely pissed off okay I'm pissed off at myself I'm pissed off at Raven and Ryan and yes I know it is not their fault that I did not come clean and that I did what I did but at the same time please try to put yourself in my 16 year old self's shoes okay because like I've said for the millionth time I effed up. I know I did. So there. And whenever him and I get back to his house, we start talking about the whole situation and I finally admit that I did kiss him. And um, he was like, well, I've done some things too. I got head from this one girl, so we can call it even. Which I'm going to be honest, I know that isn't the only thing that he did. I'm not stupid. Um, Yeah, call it even my ass because after that, all throughout our relationship um he'd been cheating on me 24 7 that's what i found out so yeah so fast forward a couple of months i want to say like november of my junior year in high school andrew and i are hanging out almost every single day like literally i spent like every waking breathing moment at his house well the one day we are in his room and he gets a phone call from ryan and he doesn't really talk to Ryan too much anymore, to be honest. Like, they just kind of fell off, you know? If I'm squinting my eyes, it's because these lights are extremely bright. Just wanted to put that out there. Anyways, back to the story. After that, I start getting a crap ton of phone calls from Raven. Um, yeah. And I kept declining the calls because I really didn't have anything to say to her. I think at one point I actually blocked her because she would not stop calling like she just did not get the hint and after i blocked her i went on my messages and i realized that she also sent me a few messages saying hey please answer i need you okay everybody that is the end of part one if you guys like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more of me maybe hit that subscribe button down below and if you want to know whenever i post my next story time make sure to click that bell also it would mean a lot to me if you guys did go and check out my snapchat show I will also have the link below down for that in the description. Also, if you want to send in your anonymous story time or you want to know how to send in your anonymous story time, make sure to click the links down below in the description. But without further ado, I will see you guys in the next video.